just see the green arrow. Okay. Just hit start. I did. Okay, okay scroll it's up. It's on. Scroll up. Okay. Yeah, I see. Okay. I see the arrow. Okay. Now you okay. can go to Chrome again. Okay. Now go to Restream and you'll see what I'm saying. Restream. We're live. Okay, but see now it's connecting. See the green arrow? Oh. It's connecting. And look here, see it's still trying to connect to these two. It will connect. But okay. it takes about 10 seconds, 15, 20 seconds sometimes for YouTube to get fully connected. So why does it say warning? Is That's it? just a bit rate to set higher. Okay. But it still goes there. Okay. Okay. So. You're broadcasting now. I am. Yes, you're live right now. Okay, so now I have to go. Just back to OBS. Oh, go to, oh, yeah, Facebook just Live. click on here. Yeah, Facebook Live, your tab up there. Okay. And it uh, should be, yeah, go live. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, now you can either leave that on or minimize it or, or delete that tab. I just, yeah, no, there you okay. go, you're live now. Oh, um, that's it? That's it. Okay. And make sure you want to check your mic. And yeah, I think the mic yeah, is working. Good. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Now you got to make sure that your voice level is coming up because you okay. don't talk as loud as I do. All right. Right. Okay. All right. Hello there. Uh, my name is Selma Edgar, I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and I had begun my broadcast a little bit ago and then got disconnected. So starting again talking about Jesus and who is he really because so many people of the world um, say a, a lot of things about Jesus about who they think he is or they just completely ignore Jesus a lot of people use his name as a curse word which really just grieves me when I hear people do that. They have no idea what they're doing when, when they do that. Jesus is God. And I'm sharing some scriptures today explaining fully what that means. And um, I shared some a while ago. I'm going to share some more now. And as I stated in the Protestant Christian Bible, in the New Testament, there's many, many, many scriptures about who Jesus is. And so I'm going to read just a couple of verses here from the book of Colossians. In the first chapter, it says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So if you hear that, if you read that, and you can believe that, that puts to rest the, the theories of all these philosophers and scientists who are always trying to figure out how did the earth get here? How, how did the world come into being? How do the planets stay in place? How does the world keep on going. <laughs> God says in the Bible that man's wisdom is as foolishness. So, and he all, God also says people who don't believe in him and in the truth are fools. That's what God says. It says very plainly here 
that everything was created by Jesus, who is God, and by him all things consist. The world keeps on keeping on because God keeps it going until the end of time when everything is going to change. And that's not my topic for today, but you can read all about it in the book of Revelations, which is the last book of the Protestant Christian Bible. When I said that, it reminded me of years ago when newspapers were the main source of information before we had all the social media and most people would read newspapers and and the boys or the men would have their newsstands out on the streets and they'd yell out read all about it read all about it you know whatever the headline was they would let people know well that's what i'm saying to you read all about it from the book of matthew to the book of revelations that is the new testament of the protestant christian bible and that's the only place that you are going to find the truth about who jesus is and there's a lot of scriptures in there between the birth of Jesus, which I read a while ago in the book of Matthew, and then what takes place in the book of Revelation. So uh, I have a few more scriptures that I want to share about who Jesus is. I just read a couple of verses from Colossians, and that was in the first chapter. And now in the third chapter of Colossians, the first verse says, Christ, Jesus Christ, sits on the right hand of God. The Catholic Church has Jesus still hanging on the cross. Well, Jesus when he died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins, he didn't stay on the cross. He didn't just die and stay dead. He did die. He was buried in the ground. But after three days, he arose. He was resurrected back to life. And he ascended back to heaven. And he is there with God the Father. In the book of 1 John 5, 7, it says, There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, which is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. In the very end of the book of Matthew, after Jesus has been buried and resurrected and right before he ascended back to heaven, he told his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, Teach all nations. It's not just for certain countries. It's not just for certain ethnic groups. It's not just for people who have a certain skin color or for people who choose to believe in other gods. He says, teach all nations. The gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ alone is for every person in the world. And that is why Norman and I spend our time talking to the world. You know, these computers and all of the social media that is available today, it's used for so many bad purposes. 
that doesn't make this technology bad, but it's the people who use it. So many people use it for bad purposes, and yet God has made it available for us to use for this great purpose of telling you how you can escape going to hell when you die. Who would want to go to hell? If you really believed the word of God in this Protestant Christian Bible, then you would not want to go to hell. Jesus talked about hell many times. It's a lake of fire, a place of torment forever and ever, it says. There's no escape. And everyone who rejects Jesus as their Lord and Savior will go to hell when they die. That's, that is the sad truth that so many people refuse to believe. Countless false religions in the world teach so many lies of the devil. Many of them say there's no such place as hell, so don't worry about it. God is love, and he wouldn't send anybody to hell. That's another lie of the devil. When you die, you go to purgatory, and then the people who love you will try to pray you out of purgatory into heaven. That's another lie of the devil. Well, you just have to be a good person and help people do all kinds of social work and God will let you into heaven because you've been so good. Another lie of the devil. Jesus said, and I've got more scriptures that I'm going to share. Jesus said, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the way, the one and only way to get to heaven. Jesus is the truth. And you know what Jesus said? Let's see. I have another verse regarding that. Also in John, Jesus said, To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth Here's my voice. In other words, if you have a heart, an honest heart, that really wants to know the truth about heaven and hell, about Jesus, about salvation, then you will listen to his voice. And his voice today is his written word in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. That is the only place where you can hear the voice of Jesus today. And he says, anybody who really wants truth will listen to his voice. But there's another verse in the book of 2 Thessalonians God says many people will perish, meaning go to hell, because they do not have a love for the truth. Think about that. Do you have a desire to know the truth? 
Or would you rather just believe whatever is convenient for you, whatever is easy to believe so that you don't have to take any responsibility? You just soothe your conscience with what you were taught as a child or whatever church you like to go to today, whatever religion has caught your fancy whatever makes it easy for you to continue your life without thinking about heaven and hell. If you do not have a desire to know the truth, your eternal destiny will be hell. And it's very real. Is not something that somebody has made up. It's in the Bible, and it's truth. Jesus also said in John 10, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man shall enter in, he shall be saved. Jesus is the only doorway that you can go through to get into heaven. That door into heaven only opens for you when you have been spiritually born again. That means, according to Ephesians 2 verse 8, I'm just going to quote it. It says, it is by grace you are saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Salvation is a gift of God that can come to you through God's grace, which is his love and favor for you. God loves you. He favors you to go to heaven instead of hell. And if you will allow that grace of God to penetrate your heart, to give you that desire to know the truth. There's another scripture that says, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. What do you need to be set free from? You need to be set free from the control of Satan from the control of sin over your life. Every person is born into this world as a sinner. And that's why Jesus said you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. Obviously, he's talking about a spiritual rebirth. You can't be physically born again. But Jesus has made the way. He freely, willfully went to the cross and suffered great agony on that cross. Paying the penalty for the sins of all mankind. It's the only way we can be justified to come in to heaven into the presence of God is by accepting the atonement of Jesus. He atoned for our sins by shedding his blood on the cross. And it is by faith, by God's grace, that we can believe that and then turn to Jesus in repentance. And that is the big step Repentance is turning to Jesus. It's not saying, oh, I wish I hadn't done those things and I'm not going to do them anymore. It is turning to Jesus and saying, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I will live in obedience to you, Jesus.
it is settling it in your heart that you are going to live according to the words of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And the whole New Testament, it's the words of Jesus, it's the writings of the apostles and evangelists. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, and it contains what God wants us to know and to live by. And God says, when you are born again, then you are a new person, a brand new person. That's what it means to be reborn. You're not the same old person that you used to be, but you now become a child of God. And you begin to live a whole new life. And it says that God's love is shed into your heart. When you're born again, you have a new heart, a change of heart that's filled with love. It's filled with the love of God. And then you love him back and you love other people with his love that motivates you to share the gospel message with other people because then you don't want them to go to hell either. That's what it's all about. So it's only by Jesus. Another word of Jesus in, from the book of John. He says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. When we are living in sin in this world, it's as if we are living in darkness. Just, it's spiritual darkness. Our minds are blinded by Satan when we are living in sin. Satan does not want you to turn to Jesus. Satan wants you to go to hell, which is where he's going to end up. Satan hates you. Satan's work is to destroy people. He is the source of all evil in the world. And evil is rampant in the world. Everybody can see that it's just it's getting darker and darker by the day. But when you become a follower of Jesus, then you are living in the light, for he is the light. And his light, then you follow his light down that pathway that will take you to heaven. And a couple more scriptures about Jesus. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So Jesus is saying, in effect, when we are living in sin, it's as though we were dead. Just like that popular series called The Walking Dead. When we are living in sin, we are the walking dead because our spirit man is dead. And only Jesus can make our spirit man come to life. He says, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. When we become spiritually born again, it's as if, just like when Jesus was resurrected from the grave, we are resurrected to new life when we are spiritually born again. 
another description that Jesus gives himself. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. So I think this is going to be the last scripture that I share. Jesus is the good shepherd. You know, in many places of the world, people raise flocks of sheep. And so they have to have a shepherd watching over them, taking care of them, leading, leading them to different pastures when necessary, protecting them from the predators. Jesus says he is the good shepherd. He gave his life for us. He compares us to sheep. And when we are spiritually born again, it says, he says, my sheep hear my voice. We know the voice of Jesus when we're born again. And he knows who are his sheep. It says, and they, his sheep follow him and he gives them eternal life. Jesus knows who is spiritually born again. And he knows who isn't. He knows who professes to be a Christian, and yet they have never been born again. There's millions of people in the world who are now just the same as I was years ago. I was one of those people who thought I was a Christian because I was going to church and reading the Bible. And even though I read the Bible, Satan still had my mind blinded. I did not fully understand what God was trying to tell me until I was almost 50 years old. And he sent someone into my life to share this gospel message of salvation. I had attended many churches and never heard the truth about salvation and that you have to be spiritually born again. So it is my hope, my desire, my prayer that some of you will have a heart to know the truth and to listen to the voice of Jesus and believe the voice of Jesus and be born again so that you too can go to heaven. But in the meantime, then share this beautiful gospel message with other people. God loves you and we love you and that's why we want to tell you about Jesus. So long.